In the United States, the image of the Mexican man has always been a complicated one. Coming from mixed Anglo and indigenous bloodlines, Englishmen and North Americans understood Mexicans to be mongrels, primitive, even bloodthirsty men driven by instinct. When they weren't busy being the villainous bandido in the American imaginary, Mexicans were treated as background characters. They were an anonymous mass of workers, not leaders, not decision makers. The stereotype of the sleepy, nondescript Mexican evolved as they entered the United States. Professor Francisco Rios wrote, He loses his picturesque and harmless ways and becomes sinister. He is now proud and hot-blooded, easily offended, intensely jealous, a drinker, a brawler. While these images may have been more common in the 1800s, they've persisted a surprisingly long time. I am the Frito Bandito. Hey, maybe you like better some lead, huh? In 1968, Judge George Murphy of California stated that Mexicans were genetically suited to farm labor because they were built lower to the ground. This history has created a battle of cultural politics where Mexicans in the United States have long struggled with issues of self-identity internally and cruel stereotypes externally. In a world where your country tells you who you are, how do you tell the world otherwise? Enter homies. The story of the two-inch plastic phenomenon begins with David Gonzalez, who would draw a comic strip in high school he called The Adventures of Chico Loco. The characters were based on stereotypes of the people he knew in his hood. There was Smiley, Pelon, Bobby Loco, and Hollywood, based on Gonzalez himself. Gonzalez was well aware of the limited representation Chicanos got in the media. The intricacies of struggle and perseverance of people in the hood was flattened by the 1990s hype against inner city gangs. This doesn't look like a neighborhood under siege by criminal gangs. Kids play openly in the streets. Neighbors visit casually in front yards. But San Jose police say Rock Springs harbored, until recently, a nest of gang members who had turned these streets into a drug supermarket. And so he took the opportunity to draw his characters with an empathy and sympathy not seen anywhere else. Lowrider magazine picked up the strip, and after it proved popular, he began selling merch. The t-shirts and art sold well, so when Gonzalez was approached with the opportunity to start selling Made in China plastic figurines, he jumped at the chance. In 1998, he released the first set of homies. They were only available in little capsule vending machines in Chicano communities, and they found instant success. In just four months, they had sold one million figurines. See, the homies are a group of Chicanos who grew up in the barrio of Quien Sabe in East LA. Quick note, the figures you're seeing right now aren't homies, they're actually mijos, which are the kids line, but I didn't read the eBay listing correctly, so oh well. According to Gonzalez, the homies deal with the violence, poverty, and drugs in their community by forming a strong support system that helped them overcome the negativity. Gonzalez's friends would approach him to get drawn as characters, wanting to get immortalized as a homie. So most of the characters represented a real-life Chicano counterpart. But unfortunately for Gomez, not everyone saw homies in a positive way. This is CBS 5 Eyewitness News. While extremely popular in Latino neighborhoods, early critics accused the homies of glorifying gangs and reinforcing negative stereotypes. It's scary that kids are playing with this, said a member of the LAPD who was trying to convince retailers to stop carrying the toys. We're trying to fight and teach kids to stay away from gangs, and we have to contend with this as well? According to the department, the use of baggy clothes, beanies, flannels with only the top button being buttoned, and teardrop tattoos meant the toys were glamorizing gang life. A district attorney went so far as to say, we're thinking of putting them up in court and saying, if you're dressed like these guys, you're violating probation. And so the LAPD tried its hardest to get stores to stop selling the toys. But it wasn't only law enforcement that targeted homies. Some Latino activist groups and parents took issue with the toys as well. Imagen Foundation objected to the homies' portrayal of Chicanos as gang members, undocumented, or drug dealers. Many found the toys to be exploitative as a way for a businessman to profit off of their lived experiences. The backlash against the toys was fierce. 
so fierce that mega chains like Walmart, Target, and others pulled them all together. So Gonzalez went on the defensive. Gonzalez says, no, these are just regular folks. Some were inspired by his childhood in Richmond and nearby San Pablo. I liken it sometimes to um, Norman Rockwell. And if you think about it, he painted the heartland, mid-America, the people he saw in his everyday life. I'm drawing what I see out there. He spoke out against the narrative that the toys glamorized gang life and pointed out how every toy had a biography that promoted good behavior. Some homies were trying to get their life together or stay out of trouble and go to school. One such homie was Willie G, an ex-gangster who ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Today, he works as a counselor, warning young homies about the possible consequences of living la vida loca. Gonzalez's counter PR campaign worked, and stores brought them back. As the years went on, the antagonism towards the toys ended up dying down. A total of 175 characters were created and 150 million toys were sold. The toys pushed the cultural boundary of what was acceptable. Take Big Dopey as an example. Meet my homie, Big Dopey. He may look dopey, but he ain't. He kind of observes things and then speaks up. He don't say much, but what he says makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like, tu sabes, after I think about it, that's right. The vato don't make sense. Big Dopey don't trip because the homies call him that. He figures it's con cariño, tu sabes, uh, with love. Besides, if someone wants some, they can come get some. Big Dopey reminds me of my primo Zach de Burke. You veteranos of Albuquerque probably know him. He drives that show winning 64 Impala. But if I told him I made him a homie toy and called it Big Dopey, he might come to Cali looking for me. And that could be dangerous. Definitely one of my favorites with a special place in my heart. Show your love for Big Dopey. The homies had personalities with individual traits, flaws, struggles. The characters gave a level of depth to a people that largely didn't exist as autonomous beings in the American imaginary. While they were cartoony stereotypes, it was something the Chicano community had never had the privilege of experiencing, a popular media presentation that was homegrown. In a lot of ways, they resemble the toys of the Little Green Soldiers, of Cowboys and Indians, G.I. Joe, Barbie and Ken. These plastic wrapped figurines allowed kids to play with the images of their idealized Anglo heroes. Homies were also created to promote images of heroes for kids to play with, but the reason they were so contentious was because they elevated a people who had been deemed controversial by white society. The Chicano subculture had been accused of promoting vice and depravity. In elevating the hood as something more than just violence, Gonzalez challenged polite society in a direct way. Sarah Burr notes that Gonzalez has been able to give the homies a redemptive voice, crafting a complete mythology. Homies gave the barrio a sweeter, kinder dimension that had long been ignored. And in doing so, they contributed to the building of a new America. Homies became sold, purchased, and consumed in just the same ways Barbies and G.I. Joes do. You can't imagine early 2000s Americana without homies. Today, homies remain controversial. For as many Latinos out there who like it, there are just as many who don't. I never got super into them as a kid since my family were more, you know, from El Rancho than inner city people, you know? But I think that's the beauty of homies. They represent a very specific subculture in the United States that has been villainized for decades. But there is one question I keep coming back to. Are homies exploitative? Well, Gonzalez sold his lived experiences as an act of rebellion. The creation of each character was an act of community as he based most of them off people he knew. He elevated Chicano people to the status of visible human and we don't see that same level of fear and antagonism towards them today, which I think is in large part due to this movement to destigmatize brownness, to make these bodies palatable to polite society. If you see homies as a marginalized individual's version of self-expression, it's a beautiful, rebellious act. But that's all it can be, really. Ultimately, Gonzalez is an entrepreneur, a brown businessman. While homies gave millions of kids a toy they might see themselves or their family members in, and they reshaped the way America viewed Chicanos, 
it mainly diversified the status quo. Poor brown people could see themselves in new media, but they remained poor. This is the fundamental issue with brown capitalism. The success of one individual doesn't help anybody else. And when the success of that brown capitalist comes from them capitalizing off a popular iconography that belongs to the entire raza, I can see why some people would call this exploitative. Because when you reduce it to its constituent parts, this is just a case of a businessman seeing and capitalizing on an open space in the market. There's nothing really rebellious about that. But what do you think? I'm struggling with the question myself, and well, if you couldn't tell, my favorite homie is Adelita, the woke scold activist, so anyway, thanks for watching.